So, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this afternoon's uh, webinar on BODS GTFS and GTFS RT data. Um, and hopefully you'll uh, learn something about how to make the uh, best use of it. Um, we are recording this this afternoon um, and uh, it will be available on our YouTube channel in the next couple of days and we'll, uh, we'll send you a link to it and a copy of the slides as well um, and please do feel free to share with uh, with colleagues that couldn't be with us uh, today live um, we do absolutely welcome questions during this afternoon's session um, please feel free to use the chat um, we uh, are uh, supported by uh, a couple of uh, colleagues from uh, from the ETO world team who will uh, endeavour to uh, answer them as we uh, as we go along, um, and we'll um, pick uh, some of them up as well for uh, for discussion at the end of the presentation this afternoon. So um, a bit about Artig for those of you that are um, new to us. We're a uh, membership body for public transport technology stakeholders. Um, we're very focused on. Um, promoting public transport technology and helping people get the best out of it. Um, we uh, have members that uh, include everybody from bus operators to local authorities, uh, suppliers and consultants, as well as um, Department of Transport and the devolved authorities. Um, and um, as well as holding events like this, we produce um, technical standards and best practice guidance uh, and advice um, for members and uh, the industry more generally um, and we represent the UK and a number of European standards working groups as well. Um, but you didn't hear come along today to hear about Artig, you came along to, uh, to hear about um, what's going on in the world with uh, bus open data and the GTFS um, data sets that are being made available by um, ETO World, who are the technical partners for the DFT in the BODS project. Um, so I'm very pleased to um, hand over now to uh, Gabriella Codrino um, from ETO World, who's going to talk to us about um, how you can make best use of the GTFS feeds available from BODS. Welcome, Gabriella. Thank you, Tim. Um, so, yeah, welcome to the um, BUS Open Data Service, focusing specifically on GTFS and GTFS real time. Um, I'm Gabriella Codriano. I'm the customer delivery manager at Ito World. Uh, we are at the um, uh, DFT's technical partner for bus open data service and uh, analyze bus open data. Today I'm Gabriella, your your audio keeps um, cutting in and out. I'm also joined today by uh, Paul Inge and Patrick um, Swanon. Um, do you guys uh, want to give a quick introduction? Sure. Yeah. Um, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Paul and uh, I'm one of the data analysts at Eto World. Um, I'm well, essentially responsible for um, choosing what BODS data comes into the to the GTFS export, um, what goes in and what doesn't. Um, so I'm looking forward to answering any questions that you have um, on that topic. I'll pass over to Patrick. Thanks, Paul. And yes, I'm the support manager engineer here at ETA World. So I predominantly work on the Analyze Bus Open Data uh, service, which is an extension of BODS, so to speak, but uh, with that, it ties closely in within BODS and BODS data. So uh, just here to help where I can. And also just a quick point as well, if there are any more technical questions which uh, you would like to gain advice or support with, uh, we will be cataloging uh, those questions as well. And if if we can't answer those today, then we'll uh, do our utmost to get back to you as soon as we can. I'll uh, pass it back over to Gabriella. Thank you, Patrick. Um, yes, so today we are going to focus on the uh, background and aims of the bots. Um, 
um, uh, service. Um, the bulk of the webinar will be focused on how to access data and uh, what uh, extensions we've made to it. And then we will open the floor to the questions if any remain um, from, from the chat. Um, quick schematic of uh, the BODS uh, universe. Uh, a lot of the Arctic webinars that we have uh, organized so far uh, have been uh, focused on the analyzed bus, bus open data, which is a social solution uh, which caters to um, bus operators, uh, regulators, OTC, DGSA, and also local authorities. Uh, and that is the extension to BODS. But Today, we are going to um, talk about the GTFS and GTFS real-time, which is made openly available for consumers to ingest in their journey planner applications. So we are in the um, top uh, right um, hand side on the, on the um, um, schematic. So uh, the Postman data uh, service is a digital service offered by the by the DSP. Uh, details of local bus services in England are being made available in transit exchange format in GTFS. So while Gabrielle is just um, sorting out um, her uh, audio, um, I'll put a plug in for the um, webinars that we've been holding with ITO over the last few months on uh, bus open data service um, which are all available on the Arctic uh, YouTube channel um, you'll get a link to that in the email with the link to today's recording but there you'll find uh, introductory sessions on on BODS um, and um, some of the other webinars that we've been doing over the last um, 18 months two years now um, and so uh, so hopefully um, if you're uh, interested in some of the more um, fundamentals of how BODS works, you'll uh, you'll be able to find out uh, about that from those. Um, thank you. Thank you, then for holding the floor. Is, is my audio better now? OK, great. So I was saying that details of local bus services in England are, me, are being made available in both transit exchange and GTFS format. Um, this is the most narrow definition of the, of the service as um, this is what is legally mandated in, in, in England. However, um, local bus operators from uh, the developed nations, so Scotland and Wales, are very much welcome to uh, publish data to, to both as well. So the aim of the service is to improve passenger journey experience um, and to enable passengers to <coughs> easily plan journeys and receive real-time service updates wherever they are in England. Um, part of the service is also focused on uh, finding the best value ticket. Delving into both GTFS, so the data is available the um, uh, link, which I'm sure that Patrick uh, can also have in, in the chat. Um, the data can be, the data can be, sorry, I think it's a microphone. Um, hey, sorry, Gabriella. I think, um, I think the issue is still persisting, to be honest, with the, with the audio. So I think it might be best if, if one of us, um, if if I take take over for the for the rest of the PowerPoint, um, obviously I'll I'll kind of be reiterating what's already on the slides, uh, but I will let Gabriella kind of fill in on any uh, any gaps in the chat log, and Paul will be able to pick up some questions as well. If it's okay, Gabriella, I'm just going to kind of read partly through the the. The presentation you've set up and then if you could just move to the next slide as we go through that would be great thanks um so yes uh i think what gabriella was saying was uh, a link to to the uh 
timetables that you can download, which uh, hopefully Gabriella or Paul can fill in in the in the chat log if, if any of you are new to the space. And so we provide a single comprehensive national data set and on the website as well, you can go through the regional data sets that are most relevant to you. And one of those uh, regions is London. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe, although that is with Traveline, uh, the, the data itself is de derived from, from Transport for London, TFL. Uh, so the data sets are updated daily. And uh, this is something that we, we do our utmost to keep, keep as remained active and up to date as possible. And any of the data that's not yet present on the bus open data service, obviously we know that there are still uh, a number of operators that are yet to upload data to BODS from, from their BODS account. Um, this, this is then supplemented by the Travel Line national data set and TFL's open data platform. Next slide, please. So within the BODS GTFS data, uh, this is uh, imported, to BOD, imported to BODS as, as uh, exported to BODS as Trans Exchange and published to BODS. And this data is then um, can, be, can be obtained with unique IDs matching the GTFS R RT data as well. And there are some additional fields such as the agency NOC in the agency.txt and the vehicle journey code in the trips.txt as well. Um, is, there, is there anything you wanted to add to that, Gabriella? Yes. Um, thanks, Patrick. So we have added the uh, not part of a pure GTFS spec um, um, specification, um, mainly to increase the transparency, transparency uh, from Trans exchange into GTFS. So agency agency NOC uh, is something that you can also find in the data catalog on um, on um, on the bots uh, front end. Um, that is to uh, allow um, uh, consumers of the data to map between, if needed, to map between GTFS and transit exchange. The uh, vehicle journey code uh, is again something that we have added uh, in case uh, consumers of the of the GTFS want to uh, also use the Siri VM uh, feeds, which uh, are again openly available on the on, on bots um, in case they are not ingesting the static each day, um, as as you probably know, uh, matching between static and real time is linked via the trip ID. Which can be sometimes fragile. If you, and if you don't ingest static data each day for a variety of reasons, because you cannot, because you, you don't want to uh, ingest data each day, um, that um, um, the, the trip ID from from the static can uh, can also have problems matching to the real time. So having a journey code as is in the Siri VM feeds will help. Uh, the transparency and debugging if there is a need for that. Thanks, thanks, Gabriella. Yeah, so so essentially we're we're just adding extra fields to optimize the matching capabilities between the static and the real time provided. So move on now to the uh, BODS GTFSRT, and so in terms of how to access it. Uh, you can uh, download in bulk from the uh, BODS DFT website and all the bus vehicle positions are for all operators who publish AVL information on BODS. It is converted from Siri VM and it is updated every five seconds. If, um, if Gabriela, if you have any other points to, to add to that, then... Uh, Obviously, do 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 your utmost. Uh... Um, no, nothing to add from that. Yeah. Um, and and that um, to get rid of static offers uh, a uh, fully matched and ready to use 
plug and play um, as I said. Thanks, Gabriella. So it is uh, an interactive API. So the timetable and real time GTFS can be acquired by via the BODS interactive API. The static data can be queried by using the admin area, so the ATCO area code. A specific time frame, if it was a, a period in time that, that you were um, most uh, concerned or uh, interested in via the national operator codes, so via the NOx, if if the if that data um, is 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 appropriately appropriately filled or or supplemented by uh, the travel line data, the data status, so you can search or filter by expired, inactive, and published. The data quality status, uh, so if you are interested in uh, determining where the progress has been made by certain operators it will be highlighted in red amber or green and uh, just one point to add on this uh, this is a fairly recent feature in terms of the validation quality report earlier this year and if there are any operators who have who published prior to those uh, quality quality report improvement features on BODS, then it may for the operator say 100% in green if they haven't published since. So for example, if an operator had published in March this year and hadn't uploaded uh, since, it could be a chance that, that the, the, the quality report is, is showing as 100%, even though it, it may be lower. And this is something that is being addressed by, by our, BODS, our BODS team. And the last thing you can you can check by is also the um, the BODS compliance as well, which is a set of parameters set up by us and uh, and and KPMG as well. So uh, for the timetable and real time GTFS, the data can be queried by BODS's interactive API. So the real time can be queried by the bounding box, the root ID, and the specific times. Um, I'll let uh, if Gabriel, if you've got anything else to add, I know I know you're having difficulties with audio, but if there's anything you want to elaborate on, feel feel free. Yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, the real time uh, data by uh, via the interactive API. Um, at the moment, um, root ID uh, is supported. Uh, however, uh, we, have, uh, we are yet to support the multi root multi uh, ID, which is an upcoming change to the interactive API, which uh, hopefully will help you um, slice the data in a way that is uh, convenient. Um, we're also looking into um, adding uh, the functionality of slicing data, real-time data by NOC. Um, this is upcoming uh, and this is where it is advertised in the monthly news, God's newsletter. Um, one more point I had on the API, interactive API, is that while the bulk um, downloads for static and real-time are freely, uh, all, the, all of the data is freely available, but uh, it's, it's openly available and there is no need to register in order to use the API because and that will um, that will uh, generate automatic API either in code or just Wagger API. Thanks, thanks, Gabriella. Uh, Apologies if 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 anyone struggled to to hear what what Gabriel was saying, but it um, there will be some further uh, parameters that you'll be able to query for the GTFS RT uh, in 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 the future. So uh, I think one of them was by knock, and uh, there will be a, a, a few other additions uh, as well. So it seems uh, 
but we've had we've had a few questions come in and um, some really good ones. And I think uh, Ananth uh, w and apologies if I'm if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. It is how often can the API be queried? Ananth has built an ETL pipeline to query the locations API, uh, but doesn't want to be locked out due to too many requests. Hence, uh, is only downloading once per day. Uh, do you know, Gabriella, if if there is a better approach, or could this be a question that that we answer uh, in in email and get? Um, so, as regards to the static data, um, data is updated, is updated daily, so requesting data more often. Um, although you, although it's possible, um, I'm not sure that that is wanted. So, as regards. Uh, real-time data, you can query uh, every Okay, yeah, so I think I think uh, Gabriella's answer was that uh, what one one day should should be should be uh, is, is is good and should be should be enough. But um, I think Gabriella said uh, that you can uh, do do it more than more than once per day. Uh, maybe maybe Gabriella would be uh, a good idea to just um, write that in in the chat log as well. And so the I, next, could I just sorry, ask, oh, sorry, it's uh, Dave Mantle from Transport API here. Um, yes, um, I think Gabriella did answer, but the microphone just cut off at a crucial point. So I did hear <laughs> the bit about the uh, static data daily. That makes a lot of sense. But the real time, I think Gabriella, you were about to say about how many sec many, many seconds, and unfortunately the the mic died just as you said the number. And it would be an interesting one to hear if I did understand that correctly, and if that's what you were telling us. I'm really sorry about the, the audio issues. I uh, I was saying that you can query the, the real-time data every five seconds. Also, that would be wise because the data updates every five seconds, so you want to get the freshest data out of the API. Perfect. Thank you so much. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, David, for, for clarifying on, on that. Um, I think another question uh, from Ananth was regarding the data quality parameters check before uh, applying a score. Now, uh, I don't, <laughs> unfortunately, don't have it up in front of me, but there is um, there is a, a variety of parameters that that are checked by by the by the BOD system when when data is published uh, from from a static point of view. Uh, such as uh, missing stops, there could be uh, timings, there can be journeys, and uh, then there are also uh, further uh, critical observations that are given as um, kind of feedback on the data that can be can be improved by operators or operator suppliers, such as uh, missing or incorrect knocks and missing block numbers. But um, that that all then gets compiled to to obviously a, a percentage, but um, but yeah, I, I think I think it would be be good to 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 explore what 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 board bods provides in terms of those quality scores. Uh, I think we've had a, another question from Alex Turnbull. Is there a time frame for when trips will include vehicle journey codes? Um, not. Not uh, a time frame that I'm willing to commit to, but uh, we are trying to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think at this time, Alex, uh, uh, we we don't we don't have a time frame, but it is on obviously on on the roadmap to do in the future. Um, if I can just um, chip in in that one in answer to Alex's um, question, the 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 challenge for the GTFS data is that that data has got to be in the um, trans exchange and the Siri um, that comes into BODS that then gets converted. Um, so if it's not in the source data, um, it won't able to be put into the GTFS um, at the moment. Um, BODS is going through a process of compliance um, with operator feeds and so some uh, data elements are missing at the moment in some of the uh, 
uh, older data that's being provided, um, which is why um, you may not be seeing some of that um, in GTFS output. Um, over time, that data will build um, and therefore will be able to be uh, output in GTFS. Um, that's great. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. And I can I can see that uh, both Josh Goodwin and and Dan have um, have attached a link to find the guidance and quality definitions to what determines a score for the data published abroad. So thank you both for attaching that. So um, there was some questions away back in the chat from uh, Simonas about um, offering GTFS RT service alerts. Um, so um, it is possible that um, in future service alerts will be available, but um, that does rely on BODs having uh, disruption data. Um, at the moment, um, there is um, an ongoing investigation by the DFT as to the future of disruption data for the Open Data Service. Um, as some of you might be aware, there um, was some development that was done um, for transport for the north um, for a disruptions management tool um, that um, has been handed over to the Department of Transport a couple of months ago um, and they are going through a process of trying to um, work out um, what should be um, done with disruptions um, and what should be done with that tool. Um, and so um, only a bit like the um, getting the um, journey codes in, um, if that's coming into BODs in some other form, then it could appear as GTFS. Um, but until that's available, um, you can't uh, you can't do that conversion. So um, if you watch the discussions on um, disruptions, um, then uh, you may be able to uh, to to work out um, when things might be available. Um, Alex also Alex up asked a question um, about um, GTFS real-time trip updates um, so because um, only vehicle locations are available at the moment um, BODS um, requires operators to provide Siri VM um, as a data input for the live data um, which is why vehicle location data is available uh, trip updates requires um, predictions to be being generated, which is not something that um, BODS is currently doing. But uh, again, subject to um, investigation and um, work on uh, future strategies for BODS um, and whether uh, predictions will be um, generated by BODs or not. So potential for the future, but dependent on, on, on the strategy work that's going on at the moment. OK. Um, Alex has just asked a question about vehicle location feed include passenger occupancy rates. Um, some operators are providing vehicle occupancy in Siri um, 2.0 format, which doesn't match or map directly to um, the GTFS uh, occupancy uh, standard. Um, it's not a mandatory field, and so um, uh, coming in in the Siri VM, it's uh, it's in there for some operators, most notably Go Ahead Group. Um, most of their depots are providing it, um, so you'll only ever get patchy occupancy data, um, at least for the time being, until it's mandated. 
think they're the ones I can answer, Dan. Uh, Patrick, sorry. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Uh, I think there are also just a couple more questions as well. Um, so Jeff has said, I noticed that there is no fear information providing GTFS. Is that a future? Uh, did we did we answer that question? Sorry, Tim. No, I don't we've think, not. No, no, we've not. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so so Jeff's asked uh, that he's that Jeff's noticed that there's no fears in the GTFS feed. Is there any plan to incorporate fears in the future, if possible? Uh, I I don't have the answer for that, but I can I can certainly um, pass it over to Gabriella. And if Gabriella is unsure, then uh, we will get back to you on that. Gabriella, do you have any any thoughts on that? Um, I do have some thoughts, uh, and they are very similar to what uh, Tim was saying about uh, fair, uh, fair data is available on both in NetEx um, as of 2021, uh, January 2021, operators are mandated uh, to publish uh, simple fares and as of 2023, uh, publish complex fares. However, as regards having them in GTFS format, it's up to uh, the um, um, investigations that the DFT is doing at the moment and the strategy of where BOS is taking. So, um, there is talk about that, but uh, there are no concrete plans at the moment for uh, fares. Thanks. Thanks, Gabriella. Um, so yes, in 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 a in a short answer to your to your question, Jeff, uh, no, uh, it, not right now, but but they are um, mandated to publish fears to boards in uh, NetEx format. Uh, so I will quickly check through the chat to see what other questions have been and left. Uh, oh. So Ananth has, a, has another question. Does the API have a provision for fetching historical data between, say, start date time and end date time? Or is this to the end user to build a history at their end? So in, in answer, answer to that, um, as far as I'm aware, but please correct me if 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 i'm wrong uh gabriella or anyone else i think at this moment uh we do not we do not off, offer that offer that service in in bods uh it is uh, down to down to the user to to build and have an archive set in place uh to to collate a a history for that yes that is correct so So uh, David has another question on clarifying whether the cov coverage extends to Scotland and Wales, and if so, how complete is the coverage there? Uh, so that's a really, really good question, and I don't think that's been covered just yet. Yeah, uh, no, perhaps that's one that I can um, pick up. Um, BODS is mandated for England through the Bus Service Act 2017. Um, transport is devolved to um, the um, to Scotland and to Wales. Um, there is some coverage in, in BODS for Scottish and Welsh data. Um, there's nothing to stop um, operators supplying data um, outside of England, um, but um it won't necessarily be complete um wales um as um you may have heard in some of the um other sessions that artig's been running um is in the process of developing um a procurement that will put in place something similar to um the functionality for BODs in England. Um, and so there may well be a, a similar but different service for Wales. Um, Scotland are in the process of considering what they're going to do. 
um, about um, having an equivalent data service, um, but haven't come to any conclusions on that one yet. Yeah, and um, just to add to that as well, on top of um, what Tim was saying, so for England, we'll have supply mostly from BODs, um, but for Wales and Scotland, we fill in the GTFS with the uh, TNDS travel line um, data um, to try and uh, complete a full data set that goes out to our GTFS. Um, so it should be a complete um, data set. Thanks. That's great. Thanks. Thank you both. Uh, I believe Paul has asked, does the link at the following URL include both trip and vehicle position data? Uh, so I'll see if I can, if myself, or one of my colleagues can open that just to see where. Tri trip updates require predictions to be yes. um because that's that's um more stop based more akin to uh in the siri world um sm um and so um it won't include trip updates certainly yeah yeah so yeah it won't be won't be both um it will not be be trip updates uh, we've got another question uh, from Jeff. Is there a way to understand which routes within the GTFS data are set published from BODS or from the National Travel Line database? Paul, is that is that one that you can answer? Is there a way of, of if downloading the, the, say, or the UK data, can you distinguish from the what is being supplemented by travel line um so currently i don't think there's a, a way um that you're able to to tell if it's come from travel line or from bods um we're currently exporting around a third of our agencies are coming from bods um and two thirds are coming from tnds um but if you switch that around and look at the uh, individual lines or routes um, we've got about two thirds coming from BODS and, and about a third coming from TNDS. Um, the way we sort of distinguish whether to um, add in from BODS is uh, generally whether the data's got a, a decent look ahead or whether it's got um, a four digit NOT code. Um, and then apart from that, we will look to, to fill it in from TNDS to fill in any gaps um, so that we've got a complete set. Um, you can also, from that link, you can download individual uh, regions. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers uh, the question, Patrick. That's great. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Dan Saunders has asked, is the bus data, is it just bus data or are there other transport modes included as well? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Yes, yeah, yeah. So so uh, Dan's asked, is it just bus data or are other transport modes included as well? Yeah, so we um, include um, most other transport modes. Uh, we don't include the national rail um, data set, but we do include things like ferry uh, data um, that comes in from the uh, travel line um and coach services as well um into our um exported gtfs yeah that's great thanks thanks paul uh the following question another question then is uh from shaleen says does the data also cover on-demand services such as go shuttles now, with with regards to that, I I would I don't have a have an answer personally, but um, Tim, do you do you have an answer to that? So um, flexible services and on demand services are not mandated under the um, legislation. There is there is um, some exploratory work going on at the moment. Um, to understand what the market wants 
um, and can provide in terms of data um, that could be used by BODS to, to cover that, uh, that gap to provide a more complete service because uh, the department is, uh, is aware that increasingly um, parts of the country don't have regular bus services, but they are served by public transport quite effectively um, using um, non-registered services in effect. And so um, they're looking to, uh, to work out how they fill that gap. Um, but uh, it'll take a little while to uh, to, to get there um, and to um, work out how to handle that data. That's great. Thank you. Thanks for answering that, Tim. Uh, we've got another question from Alex. Will the GTFS timetable routes.txt include route descriptions as featured in the BODS trans exchange files. I don't think I have the answer to that in truth. Uh, Paul, do you have any insight on that? Yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't know to hand. Um, yeah, it's not something I can answer. It's something that I could answer, Roger. OK, um, uh, thanks, Gabriella. Um, so this is a request that we had from other contributors well, um, we are not, so there is no concept of a, a description in uh, GTFS, so we're not sure how this will serve um, consumers and we don't, although we have expanded um, our GTFS to include uh, agencies, uh, agency knocks and uh, will expand it to include journey codes. We're not sure how that will benefit consumers, so we don't want to just dilute the uh, GTFS. However, if uh, if possible, we would like to get back to you and uh, have more detail about how that will serve you. Possible. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Gabriella, for answering that, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you is able to hear that answer, Alex. Perhaps Gabrielle, you could you could write a, a short answer answer to that in the chat box as well, just just in case. Yes, we'll do. Uh, the I think the final question from from Paul said for the following link: Is there a matching GTFS schedule where all the trip IDs are referenced? So, uh, I think I think in answer to that, I guess you could, and this is this is just a, a kind of suggestion. I don't know if if, if it's a, perhaps like a list that that you're you're asking about, but you could uh, download the GTFS schedule, and then from the uh, GTFS RT that you've you've acquired, it should be referenced in there. But uh, quite quite often there, there may be discrepancies in, in what vehicle is allocated a trip ID, which is why we are also um, providing further fields for that matching ability. I um, don't know if, if Gabriel, if you've got anything to add to that, but um, you, sh you should be able to match both the GTFS RT and, uh, and GTFS schedule to, to more than just the trip ID field, which I believe was, uh, su which I believe was suggested earlier in the slide. So uh, you'll be able to refer back to back to this uh, this session, uh, which I think Tim is added on YouTube and will be uh, uh, posted on the Arctic website, as well as an email being sent out of the recording as well. Uh, so I think there is uh, just one more question from Josh and said, will direction ID be added to the GTFS timetables in uh, trips.txt? I, uh, 
I'm not sure of that. Is is there anyone else who who has the answer to that? Um, I think we can get back to whoever asked the question at a later stage, uh, just to get more um, details. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks, Gabriel. Yes, uh, sorry not to be able to answer your question now, Josh, but uh, I'll uh, we, we'll be cataloging any any questions that have been left unanswered, and, and we'll get back to you on that. So I think I'll. Uh, pass it back to Tim now just to just to round things up and uh, just like to say thank you very much to everyone for for uh, joining today and also apologies for for the audio difficulties as well yeah thank you um, Patrick um, thank you uh, Gabriella and uh, and Paul for your um, work in answering um, questions um, so um, we have a, a couple more uh, sessions on bus open data service, specifically the analysed bus open data service reporting um, products planned. Um, so next week on Tuesday lunchtime, we've got a session to look at um, how you can use uh, analysed bus open data service in your bus service improvement plans. Um, where you know, as part of um, the plans you'll be looking at what KPIs should we be setting how can we get the data that sort of thing it'll give you some idea of, uh, of what's going to be possible in um, in ABODS um, and then um, in November which uh, is a few weeks away but they'll soon be with us um, we're going to uh, have a session to look at um, some new development that's taking place uh, to introduce corridor and route segments. Um, so you can look at more than just um, one route along a stretch of road, you can combine stuff. Um, and that's under development, it'll be uh, launched at that point. So um, that'll be interesting to see. Um, so thank you everybody for your time this afternoon thank you to gabriella paul and patrick again um and hope that you uh, managed to uh to to find out what you were hoping for um and apologies for the audio issues um and we look forward to seeing you again uh on a webinar soon if you want to get in contact with me to um find out more about the work of artig um, then my details are on screen. Um, and if you want to find out more about um, the GTFS um, feeds, if you um, send an email to the uh, to, to the address that's been in the chat, um, we'll make sure that's available in the email that uh, that you get with the link to the, to the recording and things like that. Okay, thank you everybody for your time this afternoon and have a good rest of the day. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.